All right, we're going to do just a little bit of shape making tutorial here for Photoshop. This should help you with your projects. So what I have here, I'm just going to try to recreate this. It looks like some basic shapes, but they're really not. First, we got this uh, triangle with a rounded corner, which is actually pretty hard to make accurately. Now, you can make any shape you want to with the pen tool, but the accuracy of it is depends on how well you use it. So for instance, if I were to try to recreate the shape and start here and here, and now I've got a curved spot here. So drag a handle out. So continue my line, click here. I've got another curved line over here. I'm gonna go the other way. Click here. Click here. Got another curvy thing there and close the shape. Well, there you go. There's a triangle with rounded edges. But it's not great. It's not very accurate. Um, that is one way to do it. I could go in and edit this with the path selection tool here and move my points over and I could get this to look a lot better with this tool just by moving some stuff around and changing some stuff but it's not going to look great um, so to get more accurate we're going to use an actual shape tool that is going to give us a nice symmetrical looking shape and then from there we're gonna to have to modify that so let's get started with that technique I'm just gonna get rid of this so in our shape tool we have the option for a polygon which could be any sided shape so a triangle has three sides so we've determined here for th a three-sided triangle um, you can set the fill color and I'm going to actually create this triangle this inner dark color. So while you're drawing, drawing your triangle, if you hold the shift key down, you can line it up at 45 degree angles. So I want the point to be facing straight this way. Now I can reposition it by holding the spacebar down. So I'm holding the shift key and the spacebar down to reposition it. And now I can start increasing the size and just slightly reposition here. Okay, I'm looking for the inside um, that dark triangle. So the transition between the dark and the green. And now I've got it where I want it. I'm going to release my click button. I'm still holding the shift button down. I'm going to release the click. So now I've created a triangle shape. But I want this to be have a rounded uh, corners here. So this is not going to work. Now surprisingly, this is very hard to do in Photoshop. Now there's other programs out there that are probably easier to use, but our goal is to create this in Photoshop, so here we go. Um, we're going to add a stroke to the outside of this, and in a minute this is all going to make sense. So I'm going to add a colored stroke here, same color that I used before. Right now it's set to three point. That's not big enough. So I'm going to change that to about, actually I'll just specify the value of 10. And right now this stroke is set to inside and I'll show you that by changing the color. It's an inside stroke, which isn't doing us any good. I want an outside stroke. So you can change the, the position of the stroke in the line settings here. So we've set the thickness of the line, but you can also set the style to be a dashed pattern or a dotted pattern but we want this to be a line and the alignment is, is the key part here so let's try right now it's inside the shape let's try halfway between in and out and that's pretty good but let's try outside now that looks good the problem is it's still got these nice pointy corners there. So we need to change the corners from that style to a rounded style. 
So here is how I would recreate this shape. It's actually the easiest way, but there's a problem with this in Photoshop. A stroke will always preserve its size. So it's based on a 10 point um, stroke size. So it will always be a 10 point stroke size, even if I increase the size of this or decrease the size. So let me show you that, for example, I'm going to resize this and just make it giant. And I'm going to zoom out. And you can see that now the rounded edge is still the same size. The distance between here and here is still 10 point. So that's not good as a vector image if you want to be able to scale it up and retain the symmetry and the, the proportions that you had before. So I'm going to undo that change. Change it back. Alright, so I'm going to um, actually use a different technique to change this to a custom shape. So first thing I want to do is rasterize this layer so I can select the pixels here. So I, I need to rasterize this shape. And right click click rasterize now these are actual pixels and not a shape so I can select these pixels by right clicking the icon for the layer and selecting select pixels now I get the marching ants around the outside and what I can do from this point is make this in, into a work path so that is found in the path tab and if I click on this button right now which will do actually let me change that so I've already done this work ahead of time so I actually uh, skipped a step so normally we would just click this and get a work path but there's a default tolerance for changing it from a selection to a work path and the tolerance means uh, detail so the higher number the the lesser the detail the lower the number value the the tighter or the closer it's going to have an accurate representation of the the pixels that are selected so we want a lower value so there, this is not a value that's easy to find you have to actually know how to get there and it's you hold down the alt key and then click on the uh, create work path from selection which is this button here and you get this special dialog box here and yours is probably set to two so I'm going to try that first and click OK now I have a path here and you can see that it is not great. So I probably did a better job when I tried to actually draw with with the pen tool. So this is not a nice looking triangle. It's not very tight to the edges. So I'm going to undo that previous step. Get back to my selection here. And I'm going to set the tolerance to a lower value. The lowest value that I can get is 0.5 pixels. So I'm going to put in 0.5 pixels and click OK. Now I'm going to select this and you can see the difference. This is a much tighter um, work path. It's much more accurate. So the accuracy of your work path is determined by the resolution of the image you're working with, which this is a very small portion of this already small um, image. So we're working with about an inch, maybe an inch and a half worth of pixels here. So already the detail is not super accurate. If this was a larger image, um, there wouldn't be all these different points here. And the tolerance, I could set at a higher value and get good results but since it's a smaller thing I have to decrease the tolerance to get a more accurate outline here
So now I have a work path. That's what this is here. And I'm simply going to use this work path to define a custom shape. So I'm going to use any of these path selection tools just to be able to click the actual path in my project. I'm going to choose from the menu define custom shape. And I'm going to call this a uh, rounded triangle. Click OK. So now that I've created a custom shape, I can get rid of this shape. I just use this to create this stroke and get an accurate shape. I'm going to delete it. And now I have a work path it's still selected. I'm just going to deselect that. Make sure nothing is selected in here. So now I'm going to go to my shape tool and choose the custom shape tool from the menu there. And then in my shapes, in the drop menu here, it should be the last shape because it's the last one that I created. And I'm going to set the fill to something more accurate to the drawing here. And I'm going to start drawing my shape. I hold the shift key down while I'm drawing it out. And it's not super exact. Uh, my stroke probably should have been a little bit bigger, but it's going to be good enough. So it's about right there, let's say. So there's my first tr triangle. And I'm going to go to the Move tool just to nudge it over, just to scotch. And there's uh, some little bit jaggedy edges here. But again, if I were doing this for real, I probably would start with a larger image. That way I could get a, a better straight line along here. I'm curious to see what this looks like if I scale it up. So let's do that real quick. Oh yeah. You can see there's some jaggediness. So again, if I was working with a larger image, this would have turned out a lot better. But for instruction purposes, this is the best it's going to get. Let's just cancel out of that. All right, so we have one shape and so for this, I'm going to assume that this middle area is actually removed from this front shape. So that's like a transparent area. It's not like a black triangle. It's, it's been cut away from the green triangle. So I'm going to very simply um, duplicate this and use it to subtract the other triangle. So control J is duplicate and then I want to scale this one down. I'm holding the shift key down to make sure that I don't change the uh, ratio of height to width. And I'm going to reposition it and then it needs to be smaller. smaller here. Then if I need to I can use my arrow keys to nudge it over down a little bit. Maybe a little bit more down. Okay, I'm going to try not to be super exact here. So let's say that's perfect. So what I want to do is subtract this shape from this shape. So to do that, I'm going to select both shapes, and then I'm going to go to the Edit tool, or Edit tab, sorry. It's and oh, actually, it's the uh, Layer Layer tab, and then we want to go to the Combine Shapes option, 
which this actually will uh, subtract. And I want to choose subtract front shape. So I've just now created a hole inside the other triangle. Now if this wasn't super accurate, there's other ways I could have done it um, by creating another triangle, rasterize that triangle, then create a custom shape, and subtract that shape from this shape. But again, I'm just giving you some um, just some methods and some techniques to use to create shapes. So you get the idea there. So if this is all blank area, then I have a simple triangle in the middle to create that light blue triangle. Whoops. I want to deselect all my shapes, so I'm creating a new shape here. Again, that's the rectangle tool. I want the polygon tool. Make sure it's still three sided. There's no stroke, it's just a plain triangle. Hold the shift key down to make sure it's nice and straight, pointing this way. Align it up and then release the mouse click. So there we have the majority of the featured part of the logo finished. I have a bunch of these rectangles out here, or squares, and this is the easy part. So all of these would just be squares. Go back to the rectangle tool. And so let's say we're doing these blue squares here. making these squares here. Since um, now these are all separate rectangles that are being created, we can combine these after we're done. Some of them are darker than others. So again, if this was something I was trying to recreate perfectly, I'd probably create some that were a lighter color and some that are darker color and then copy it. Actually let's just do that. Uh, I think I'll leave these like this. And then let's go ahead and do some more. Actually I'll combine these first. So we've got one, two, three, f uh, three different rectangle layers. Some of them are individual. Some of them have multiple rectangles in them. I'm just going to merge all these shapes together into one shape. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the green ones. Got a few of those like nice little squares going on there. So we're just gonna merge all these together. Alright, so to create some depth in this, I could duplicate these layers. So I'm gonna duplicate the blue rectangles first. Control J. And then I'm going to transform the size of these Be a little bit smaller. Maybe place them over here somewhere. Then I'm going to make them a darker color. Let's 
go with this color here. Alright. And then I want to make sure that these are be on the bottom behind. Then let's do the same thing with the green. Scale these. And maybe just. I might remove some of these rectangles real quick. So, with the direct selection tool, we can go in here and select some of these and just delete them. Well, I thought I could. There we go. Uh, let's do that one. I'm just going to keep the rest. All right, so transform this again. Throw it back here. And then we're going to change the color to dark a darker green. Set those in the background. Alright, so it's hard to see what we've got so far, so I'll just add a shape here just above this image layer. Just a background. So I'm going to set it to white. So you get the idea. This is uh, not exact, but we're getting in the spirit of the original that we're trying to copy, duplicate. All right, so there's some of these areas where it's cut out of the triangle. So this is the probably the last thing we're going to go through. So how do I get the triangle to get some of these little indentations? They actually look kind of circular. So I'm going to, actually I'm going to assume those are rectangles. Maybe they're black. So we're just going to delete some rectangles. It's going to be from this shape here. And we want to actually make sure that is selected. We're going to make some rectangular shapes, but make sure that we're set to subtract front shape. You see the little minus symbol there? That indicates whatever I'm going to draw is going to be subtracted. So I'm going to draw a little rectangle here. Maybe another one over here. Maybe a more shallow one here. So all of those are just kind of being cut out of that outer triangle. All right, so now let me turn the layers back on. See how that looks. There you go. So it's similar, but not exact. But the important thing is learning how to do these things. So hopefully this helps with your projects.